Hello there, my name is Luke and welcome to another non-league news flash. Today I'm going to be bringing you up to date with all of the news that has happened in non-league in the last week. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So as always, we're going to start off in the Vanaraba National League and we'll start off on Monday night at the start of the week where Lincoln City got a 2-0 victory over Dagenham and Redbridge. Then on Tuesday night, Macclesfield got a 2-1 victory away at Southport. Tranmere got a late winner through Michael Hickway to get a 3-2 victory over Sisson United. York City missed them. York City missed a chance to get out of the relegation zone for the first time in around six months. They ended up losing that home game 2-0 to Bromley. Then on to Saturday, Aldershot drew one all with Torquay United. Barrow drew two all with Woking. Dover went away to Braintree and got a victory. Bromley edged out Wrexham in an in entertaining game for the neutral, a 4-3 victory there. York City eventually moved out of the drop zone, right in the wrong that happened in midweek with a 2-0 away victory at Chester. Lincoln City, with a second half winner away at Eastleigh, kept them top of the table with a 1-0 victory. Maidstone got an impressive result away at Gateshead. Forest Green got three points at Guiseley. Dagenham and Redbridge hit four past Macclesfield away from home. That's pretty impressive. Boreham Wood beat North Ferriby United 4-2. Sutton drew two with Southport. A 90th minute equaliser from Rory Deacon managed to salvage a point from that game from Sutton United. And last but by certainly no means least, Tranmere Rovers with a new National League record. It's the the biggest margin of victory ever in the National League. It's a 9-0 victory against Solihull Moors. A crowd of 5,000 people were there to witness this at Prenton Park as Cole Stockton got a hat-trick, Connor Jennings got a hat-trick, so two players getting a hat-trick for the same team in the same game and three other goals being scored as well. It's an emphatic victory for Tranmere. Very, very impressive and it's embarrassing for Solihull. They need a big response now between now and the end of the season. Now onto the table, Lincoln sits at the top of the pile, level on points with Tranmere, but with a game in hand on the Prenton Park side. Forest Green sit in third, Dagenham and Redbridge in fourth, and Aldershot with a draw today stay in fifth place. Then in the drop zone, Braintree are in 21st, Torquay in 22nd, North Ferriby in 23rd, and Southport at the bottom of the table on 24th. Although no teams are currently mathematically relegated, North Ferriby and Southport are looking highly, highly likely to drop down this season. Now into the National League North and we'll start off with Staley Bridge Celtic getting a rare victory 2-0 away at Alfreton. Brackley drew 0-0 with Halifax and Nuneaton drew one all with Gloucester. Then on to Saturday's matches, Brackley won 3-1 away at already relegated Altrincham. Boston won 3-0 at Telford, a 0-0 draw between Bradford Park Avenue and FC United Manchester. Darlington edged out Tamworth for the 3-2 victory. Gainsborough lost again to stay in the drop zone against Stockport this time by a really narrow margin of 1-0. My team Kidderminster Harriers went away to Gloucester and picked up a 2-1 victory. Very happy with this one. Joe Ironside gets on the score sheet again. He's got four goals and one assist in his opening four games for Harriers after a £25,000 move just a few weeks ago, so he has made an absolutely awesome start, that is for sure. Moving on to the rest of the games, Halifax beat Alfredson 1-0, Harrogate drew 3-0 with Salford, Harrogate got three goals in the last 10 minutes, all coming through Simon Ainge, all of them are penalties, although one of them was a rebound from a penalty, but it's just an unbelievable situation. Nuneaton drew 1-0 with Chorley, Worcester drew 1-0 with Curzon Ashton, and the game of the weekend Staley Bridge Celtic getting a 2-1 victory over AFC Fylde as a Harriers fan. I am loving that. The title race is back on. Unbelievable scenes and just delighted with that. So what that means for the table is that Fylde, they are still top, but Kidderminster are now six points behind with a game in hand. There are only five games left for Harriers this season, four for Fylde, so it's going to be very tight. It could go down to the last day. Halifax are in third, Salford in fourth and Darlington are in fifth. In the drop zone, Gainsborough stay in 20th, Staley Bridge with their victory stay in 21st and already relegated Aldrey on the bottom of the table on just 17 points. Now into the National League South and there was just one midweek game this week. It was Pool Town versus Hungerford, two teams that have had ground grading inspections at the end of last week and it ended with a one-all draw. Then on Saturday, Paul Town lost 3-0 to Chelmsford, Bath City emphatic 5-0 away victory at Concord Rangers. 
An entertaining game for the neutral ended in a 4-3 victory for Dartford over Eastbourne. Maidenhead stayed top of the pile with a 2-1 victory over East Thurrock. Hampton and Richmond Borough with a 5-0, again a very emphatic scoreline against Oxford City. St Albans got a late equaliser against Margate for a one all draw. Truro drew one all with Ebbsfleet. Ebbsfleet will be gutted by that because the gap at the top now is five points. They've got a long way to make up. Wildstone drew one all with Hemel Hempstead. Welling beat Gosport 4 0. Western beat Bishop Stork 5 0. And Hungerford beat Whitehawk 2 1. So some very emphatic scorelines. And it has been for a few weeks now in the National League South. There does seem a big divide between the teams at the top and the teams at the bottom. So the league table now looks like this. Maidenhead are still top. They are five points clear of Epsley in second. Chelmsford are in third. Dartford fourth. And Port Town in fifth. In 20th is Gosport. In 21st is Margate. And in 22nd is Bishop Storford. Now for the rest of the news in non-league and we'll start off with the confirmation that Darlington 1883 are now going to just be called Darlington. The name change has been approved and that is great news, particularly for the fans of Darlington who've been wanting this change for some time. There's been some managerial changes this week. Tommy Ridlington has stepped down as the manager of Eastbourne and Welling United have brought in Alex Dyer to work alongside Tristan Lewis as manager until the end of the season. The Player of the Month and Manager of the Month awards were announced for March. In the National League, Jay Saunders of Maidstone got the award for Manager of the Month. Jay Harris of Tranmere, he's a midfielder and he was Player of the Month for March. He got a hat-trick against North Ferriby. Tim Harris won Manager of the Month. He is the manager of Gloucester City in the National League North. Stockport winger Danny Lloyd got Player of the Month for the National League North. Then in the National League South, the familiar sight of Dave Tarpey getting Player of the Month again. And Wealdstone's long-serving manager Gordon Bartlett got the award for Manager of the Month. He's been in charge of Wealdstone for 22 years. That is an unbelievable achievement. So that's it for this week's Don League News Flash. If you found it useful and enjoyed this video, then make sure that you click that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with Don League as this season is coming to a close now and it's getting very crucial you cannot miss any of it so as always thanks for watching